Hi, I'm Karen Greaves. I'm the uh, Regional Sustainability Manager for Queensland for Lendlease, and we're here today at Yarrabilba to take you on a bit of a tour through some of our site and to have a look at some of our key water uh, sensitive urban design elements. So just to, to open with a bit of context to Yarrabilba for those of you who aren't familiar with our project. So we are building not just a, a residential subdivision, we're building a small town. We've got a 2062 hectare uh, site that was a former pine plantation and we're essentially building something the size of Gladstone. So by the time we're finished here in scarily 2042, give or take, uh, there will be 45,000 people calling Yarrabilba home. It'll have a 50,000 square metre town centre, roughly 17,500 uh, residential lots. And I think the figure that really puts it in context for people is uh, 11 schools. So. It is, it is big and it's an interesting project in its context in terms of it is uh, a, parcel, a single parcel of land under one landowner and as a former pine plantation it has got a, an environment that is an interesting one to deal with. We've got poor soil quality, we've got degraded waterways, we've got you know an ecosystem that needs reviving so that we can, we can see our species thriving again. And our approach to water sensitive design has created some, some beautiful spaces. On our virtual tour today, we'll be stopping at three locations. The first one being Darlington Park, one of our first district parks and you'll see some examples of amazing water sensitive urban design. We'll then come up and through to Buxton Park and then on to Jinanjali. Hi, I'm Nick Smith from Designflow. Uh, we've been involved in Yarrabulba for um, nearly 10 years now as part of the stormwater management and flood management and design team. We have here today behind me is one of the first wetlands and stormwater treatment systems that were designed for this site as part of stage one and it's closely integrated with the regional Darlington parklands in front of me and very much provides for an aesthetic experience while integrating stormwater treatment uh, and meeting our stormwater management obligations. Uh, this system picks up commercial and residential areas. It also links with a, a number of other bioretention systems downstream similar to this all form part of the, uh, the park fringe. The system was designed in about 2011, constructed in about 2013 and then went through a process of obviously being protected during the construction phase. The final wetland form in terms of its planting was done in about 2014 and what we see today is, is that sort of five, five years plus of growth and it's looking really good and we're really happy with it um, and it's actually uh, quite a draw card for, for Darlington Parklands. Adjoining the wetland area is an existing um, waterway corridor with some well-established vegetation and so the design of this system was very much uh, intended to merge into that natural waterway and over time basically disappear um, into the corridor and, and form part of it. And what we're looking at here is the, the natural waterway corridor just downstream of the constructed wetland in Darlington Parklands. Some very clean um, discharge from the wetland which, which had some pretty heavy rain overnight um, and early this morning so this is just the, um, the wetland drawdown over the next day or two uh, back to its normal water level um, and some very clean water and, and nice water um, entering the waterway. Uh, what we're looking at behind us here are a couple of um, bioretention basins which were again implemented in the early stages of Yarrabilba, uh, part of the first um, precinct of stormwater management. These systems were also constructed in 2013, landscaped a few years later after the house building phase was completed. And what we can see over my shoulder now is a basin that's been well established for in the order of five to six years, um, very mature vegetation, um, highly functional in terms of stormwater management and very much disappearing into the background of, um, of the waterway corridor behind it. So what we're looking at here is, is a great example of the urban design interface with the um, linear open spaces which very much dominate Yarrabilba because of the, the terrain and the natural waterways. Um, the system on the right was planted in 2015 and the system on our left is now um, only a year and a half into planting and, and has a few more years to go before reaching that um, ultimate maturity. So great example of what 
they start to look like and what they will look like in the, in the long term. So again, we've got um, a great linear park, um, functional stormwater treatment system, um, and, and a great aesthetic outcome um, all around. And um, it's, it's really good to see these systems um, this, this long into their establishment and operational phase. And these biobasins are now actually council, Logan City Council assets. And from their perspective, they've, they've been um, handed some, some relatively low maintenance um, bioretention basins, which is very much the intent of, of what we want to do at Yarra Bilba. Okay, here we are at the Buxton Parkland and Buxton Wetland. Uh, this, this area is the far north of Precinct 2 at Yarra Bilba. Um, and this basically forms a, a regional stormwater treatment system um, in terms of our, our Buxton wetland. The catchment to here is about 200 hectares and takes in most of Precinct 1 and 2. Uh, and this, this wetland's quite important. It was conceived very early in the, the planning for Precinct 2 and, and the decision to adopt a regional approach to stormwater treatment was, was a really good one because it meant we could put a major system online to um, some of the local drainage lines um, and get a really good outcome in terms of uh, a park interface as well as managing some of the um, natural um, protected vegetation which exists immediately adjacent to this site. What we're looking at today is essentially a system that was constructed in about 2016 and operated for a number of years as a construction water source so we had no or very little vegetation um, and a high water level set in this, this system and then in 2018 the system was um, the water levels were dropped and the full uh, wetland planting was undertaken and so we're now two and a half to three years into, into the wetland establishment um, and it's, it's been through a few wet and dry seasons and really thriving uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of what we can see on the ground now. It's also a very important place for the community to come and enjoy and the, the backdrop of the wetland is both aesthetic as well as the um, great cooling uh, function that it has in this space and it's, it's noticeably cooler here than you know, only 100 metres away uh, within the urban streets. This whole area has uh, quite, a, quite a few functions actually. There's not only the stormwater quality management aspects of this wetland um, but it also forms the, the base of a, uh, a major regional flood detention basin. So there's a, a major flood bund um, sort of in the backdrop behind us which, uh, which manages basically all the minor and major flooding to the downstream properties which we're required to, to have our no worsening effect on flooding. Uh, so we've got um, stormwater quality overlaid with, with flood management, uh, we've got um, public open space interaction, we've got um, a fairly big increase in the local habitat for birds and wildlife in this area um, and it's really expanding on those existing um, regional ecosystem uh, vegetation pockets which exist um, adjoining this area. Th this wetland was very much formed as a, I guess, primarily as a stormwater management aspect but then the, the overlap um, and benefits of all these other layers has really, really made it a beneficial place within Yarrabilba. People are free to move around the edges of the wetland, albeit informal gravel paths, but people use it for dog walking and it's just a, generally a nice space. What we're looking at here is the inlet zone to the, the major wetland. It's 1.4 hectares in total. Um, in the background is the existing regional ecosystem which has been protected. Uh, and essentially 200 hectares of urban catchment flows in um, and into this wetland and through these um, alternating sort of shallow marsh zones to the deep marsh and then some small open water zones. Um, and then it wraps back around the system to um, the far side to a, a controlled outlet. Um, in the distance you'll see a white roof which is actually a bird hide and that's been integrated into this system to take advantage of the great increase in, in bird habitat. So here we are at Junung Jali Park uh, at Yarrabilba and this is another um, I guess prime example of where we've tried to integrate our stormwater management strategy with a number of other overlays into a space. Um, where we are on the site here is an old um, former drainage line that was basically wiped out and denuded from the former pine plantation. There was virtually nothing here when, when we arrived. Um, and the intention was to try and, I guess, reinstate that drainage line um, to some sort of natural, natural waterway uh, while integrating our stormwater treatment systems and, and flood management um, into this space. So, 
So what we can see in this space around us is basically a bioretention behind me which has uh, been constructed in about 2017 and landscaped in about 2019 and so it's, it's quite well established. Um, beyond the bio basin, uh, we've got an ephemeral wetland zone which is just uh, basically forms the, the invert of a, um, another smaller scale flood detention system. Uh, and that manages this local catchment um, flooding to the downstream properties. Integrated into the space is also a, a reconstructed natural waterway um, and the bio basin's discharging into that. So it's a, a basically a, a contained space where we've able to, been able to overlay a number of useful and beneficial um, open spaces. As I said, there's the stormwater quality function, we've got a flood detention function, um, we've got a, a green space which is again another um, ideal space for getting away from the, the highly urbanised environment and into a cooler space where you can you can actually notice the, the breezes are, are cooler. As the trees and vegetation gets up over the next few years, this will become uh, quite a, a corridor where trying to replicate I guess what we saw over near Darlington Parkland, which was a, a natural bit of corridor that we're trying to expand. We are trying to make one from scratch here um, while overlaying a lot of other uses. There's also uh, a network of footpaths around this whole system. There's a school um, interfacing the park. There's um, a sediment pond upstream, which forms a, another little local habitat for some birds and, and wildlife. So what we've ended up here in Dianang Dali Park is, is really a space that's overlaid a um, whole lot of uses and functional elements to really come, uh, come out with a multifunctional space. Um, and these become more important as development expands to have these, I guess, these green spaces that are, are cooler um, and they're functional and you can move around and people will actually come here to, to enjoy them. The, the health of the vegetation has been exceptional with that, that permanent saturated zone that we've got um, and that really means that after two years growth which is essentially what we're looking at here we've got a, a fully established system really dense um, undergrowth with uh, well established trees and shrubs so within another five years this system is going to just look like um, a bit of a forest and it's really going to merge into the, uh, the surrounding waterway um, corridor. So this is just a close-up of what we've been adopting here at Yarra Bilba in our bioretention systems um, which is a, a permanent saturated zone in the base of, of all the bios and that's essentially just controlled by these walls inside the overflow pits uh, and it's really giving the, the vegetation that extra um, supply of water during the, the long dry times. This particular system had rain last night so it's, it's just drawing back down to, to its um, permanent saturated zone level um, and they're functioning really well. As Nick mentioned, uh, many of our open spaces have, have several overlays and one of the ones here at Jinunjali is um, we, we use this uh, as a way to interpret the cultural uh, heritage of the site. So Yarrabilba has a, a really rich heritage both from um, World War II, uh, European farming and also through to, to the traditional um, owners and custodians of the land. So Yarrabilba in the, in the Yungambeh language means place of song and it was a meeting place for, for groups throughout the area. And Jinningjali means uh, walking through the trees. So what we've actually done here is, is we've chosen to plant uh, native food within this trail so that people can walk and, and experience and understand and you know look and feel and, and touch some of these traditional foods as a way of uh, helping understand the, the significance of this site.